Good morning, church family, and happy Sabbath. It's time to read our scripture for the day. And uh, it is found in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 37 and 38. Acts, chapter 2, verses 37 and 38. Now, when they heard this, they were caught to the heart and said to Peter and the rest, of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. May this holy word of God be planted in our hearts as we serve our Lord today. church family it's time to seek the Lord in prayer our God loves to talk with us through prayer and I know that every one of us we love to talk to our Lord through prayer shall we bow our heads for prayer our loving Father who art in heaven we praise and honor you for taking care of us during these difficult times. O oh, Father, we humble ourselves to you and help us to lean and trust you in good times and bad times. O oh, Father, because you know what is ahead. We ask you, O oh, Father, to bless your Kahului Church. Bless the youngest to the oldest. And if there are sick among them, I ask you, O oh Father, to heal them. Whatever sicknesses they have, I ask you, O oh Father, to bless also our Pastor Alex as he speak to us your holy word. Prepare our hearts as we listen to his word, O oh Father, because we know that those words that he is going to speak comes from you. O oh Father, forgive us and cleanse us from all our trespasses that we may be worthy for your holy word. For I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning in the Happy Sabbath Church family. It is now time to worship the Lord through giving. 
I just want to remind you that you could still give back your tithes and offering through our website kahuluisda.com and adventistgiving.org or you can um, bring your tithes and offering to our church and drop it off to our mailbox. Um, this pandemic has brought a lot of financial difficulties to maybe one of our church families or your co or your friend or your family member and if God's blessed you with extra I think it's a good time to reach out to those who are struggling in Acts chapter 20 verse 35 it says in everything I showed you that by working hard in this manner you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he himself said it is more blessed to give than to receive shall we all bow our heads for a word of prayer gracious loving Heavenly Father Lord I come to your throne of mercy Lord I praise you for giving us this opportunity to still worship you freely even though we were apart from each other, you've given us, provided a way for us to worship. Lord, at this moment, I pray for those who are struggling financially. I pray that you please touch um, somebody's heart to reach them out, Lord. And I also pray that you please bless those who give their tithes and their offerings back. And also bless those who, uh, who cannot. Lord, at this moment, I pray that you please forgive us, Lord, from our all, all our sins. And we thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross to receive our sins. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Adventist Giving allows you to return your tithe and give your offerings online, even when circumstances prevent gathering for worship. There is no cost for this service, and gifts can be made with credit or debit cards and ACH transactions. You can even set up recurring donations for both tithe and offerings. Your tithe and offerings are processed securely, quickly, and efficiently. Smartphone apps make participation even easier. Worship happens whenever we lift our hearts to God. The Adventist Giving Program enables your worship to include your faithful return of tithes and offerings. It enhances the mission of the church and carries a blessing for you and for your local church. For more information, go to AdventistGiving.org or ask your pastor for more details. What shall I return to the Lord for all His goodness to me? Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to the children's story or the Keiki story. And I will have, a, I will do object lesson this morning. We have object and we have a lesson from it. Anyway, I have three items. We have napkins and cup and a bowl of water. So the Bible said to be in the world but not of the world. So this will represent the world. We are in the world, but not of the world. So if I decided to go into the world, this, um, what, what was in the world? Also, the Bible said that what is in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the bride of life. And they're not from the Father, but they're from the world. So, if I decided this will 
this will represent myself so if I decided to dive into the world or go into the world and thinking that I will be strong to go there by myself so let's see what happened to me when I go into the world by myself right so I could dive into the world first I'm sinking you know second I'm wet and third I'm all wrinkled up and I am totally look so weak and because I'm wet I can be easily ripped or tear that's what happened when you go into the world the world in Florence will left you broken will left you in pieces it will ruin you and it will destroy you and you're left to death by yourself you die you cannot win so you don't want to do that right you don't want to do that so how can I live in the world and be safe so what I'm going to do if I will be smart enough I will put myself and hide myself within Jesus Christ this cup will represent Christ and I hide myself in Jesus Christ because the Bible said without Christ I am nothing so I cannot face the world by myself or I'll end up like this guy so if I could be smart enough not smart enough with the help of the Holy Spirit I would hide myself in Jesus Christ and if I go into the world I'm going with Christ and if I dive into the world Christ is protecting me so let's see so I come out and I don't look like the other guy look I still look I'm dry and I'm still in shape a little bit wrinkle but all protected all right that's what happened when you put yourself in Jesus Christ he promised us that he will never leave us nor forsake us in this life especially this time of pandemic and coronavirus it would be wise to hide yourself in the blood because he said in the world you have tribulation but he also promised he will be with us don't be discouraged because you are facing the world not by yourself but with Christ Happy Sabbath everyone!
Dear Kahalui Church, I wish you a happy Sabbath. With a very warm aloha, I would like to greet all our friends from different parts of the world on this beautiful Sabbath morning. Since March 17, we have been worshiping from our homes. But now we are looking forward to reopening the Kahalui Seventh-day Adventist Church on the month of June, pending government approval. What a day is going to be. We will see each other again face to face. But please follow us online for specific reopening guidelines on our website page, kahaluisda.com. Text for today is going to be from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 37 through 38. And our sermon title, Which Church Will Peter Join? Actually, this weekend... On May 28th until today, May 30th, many are celebrating the festival of Shavuot. Actually, Shavuot is in Hebrew, but Pentecostal is in Greek, the same festival. It's the festival of the weeks falling on the 50th day after the first day of the Passover. Shavuot celebrates the Israelites receiving the law, the actual Ten Commandments, on the Mount of Sinai. It is one of the free food festivals, including Passover and Sukkot, the festival of tabernacles, where the Jew, Jewish men used to travel by food to the Holy Temple in Jerusalem, Israel. Throughout the eve and night of Shavuot in Jerusalem, until today, many people stay in whole night learning from the Bible, passages and studying, and then walk to the western wall to sunrise and pray the morning festival prayer. But today, I would like to invite you on a journey. I would like for you to use your imagination as we all walk together with the disciple of Jesus, Apostle Peter. Try to assume what Peter came to life again. And we will feel his reaction to our modern style of worship. Let us see which church will Peter join, as we have an opportunity to rejoin in our churches again. Before we dive further into the today's topic, did you know that Peter preached his first sermon on the day of Pentecost? Yes, he preached a powerful sermon. Yes, the same festival that has taken place this weekend was and those days when Peter was preaching. There are many lessons we can learn from the Bible. And let us pray that God can keep both our eyes and our hearts open as we dive deeper into the Word of God. Dear Heavenly Father, we are praising you for the gift of life. We are living in a time, dear Lord, when people are dividing many things. Even they are dividing your Bible, your Word, to the Old Testament and to the New Testament. Some are saying what some of the commandments from the Old Testament, it's only for the Jews. But today, we live according to the New Testament all only. Dear Lord, as we will dive in into your word, we would like for you to inspire us to see your truth. In the name of Jesus, amen. Many times, when we want to remember something, we set up a memorial. We have a war memorial. We have a historical memorials. Memorials to remember great men and great women. And the list goes on and on. But according to the Bible, on the sixth day, God had finished all of the creation work and everything was so beautiful. Adam had been created and then Eve. God set aside the seventh day as a day of remembrance. God established a memorial, a memorial of his creative power, but he established that memorial special celebration in time. And this is what actually the book of Exodus in chapter 20 tells us. 
Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. And you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter. Actually, I remember in Bulgaria, we were running an evangelistic program. And a local Orthodox church did not like what we were doing, promoting worship services on Sabbath. And so they placed posters outside, reminding people about foreign religion. I step onto the stage, ready to preach, but suddenly the electricity went out and it became very, very dark. Some began to scream fear. And one of our sisters came out on the stage and began to sing. Yes, microphones were not working, but she had a powerful voice and violinist and cellos and the whole entire orchestra began to play along with her. And with this music, everything really started to change, the whole atmosphere. And no wonder, Peter is saying actually in 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 19 through 21 where he says we also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and this morning star rises in your hearts the word of god is the light shining in dark place when a person learns new information from the Bible, it makes a special impact on every single individual if you really study deeply the Word of God. And often a person wonders, what, what, what should I do next? But the Bible is teaching us, repent and be baptized. You see, the Bible begins with Genesis, right from the beginning, with the first people. And I just wonder, did they knew about the law of God? After Adam and Eve fell short, they learned what they committed sin. The law of God already existed for them. Long time before Moses actually received those Ten Commandments on the Mount of Sinai. For the Bible pages, as we will go through, we come to Abraham, who actually step out in faith and left his home place. We read in Genesis what Abraham obeyed God's voice. So Abraham knew about God's laws, about his commandments, and about his statutes. And the Bible says he kept them. Long time before Moses received Ten Commandments on Mount of Sinai. You see, in the book of Exodus, we come to the story of Moses. But it's Fascinating to watch what in Exodus 16, that manna fell from heaven and for the people to, to eat and support them while they were traveling from Egypt to the promised land. And on Friday, a double portion of manna fell so people could gather more on Friday so they would not have to gather on the Sabbath morning. Moses, actually, he warned the people what no manna will fall on the Sabbath. During the week, if people try to collect extra manna, it will spoil for the, by the next day. But though a double portion collected on Friday morning continued to be sweet during the Sabbath hours, the Lord was teaching some valuable lesson to His own people. We prepare many things for Sabbath and Friday. Since the Bible is called the Friday as the preparational day. We vacuum our house, we wash our cars on Friday and fill gas on Friday. We make our plans and preparation for Sabbath all on Friday, just as Moses and people did on their days. As we come to the book of Isaiah in the middle of the Bible, book of Isaiah, it says, as the new heavens and the new earth, what I make will endure before me, declares the Lord in chapter 66. So will your name and your descendants endure from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath, one Sabbath to another. All mankind 
will come and bow down before me, says the Lord. Now, as we can continue on from the pages of the Bible, I would like for us to go into the New Testament. In the New Testament, we read what uh, actually Dr. Luke is saying about Jesus. What Jesus, he went to Nazareth when he had been brought up. And on Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, was his custom. Let us imagine for a moment what Peter, the disciple of Jesus, comes to life again. And now he is coming to Rome. He walks up to the old Appian Way, which is still there today. Peter approaches the town. Let us imagine this. Looking at a young adult person, a young boy, notice him, but he is quite a little bit strange. And he ran to help him. While Peter opened his mouth in surprise, what is that? He asked. Well, this is just uh, some cars, says the young boy. I never seen anything like that before, answered Peter. Continue to use the imagination. You see, he looks across the central square where he can see the train station. What is that? Oh, that's just a train. It, it's going to Milan and it will be there just in a few hours. Peter is fascinated as he watches what appears to be a huge bird flying without flopping its wings. What is that? asked Peter. Oh, that's just an airplane. Oh, says Peter, these things are surely a sign of the times. Daniel said that man shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. As they walk along, Peter sees tall towers with red blinking lights on them. What are those? Oh, those are TV and radio and 5G towers. A man's voice can be heard on the radio across all Italy. Many people can hear his message at the same time and even watch the individual on the Facebook or on YouTube channels. Yeah, that, that surely is a sign of the last days. So many people, people wonder, so many people can hear and watch the gospel being preached all at the same time? Oh yes, knowledge certainly has been greatly increased. Then Peter pointing to the line of people. It seems like they were trying to stay six feet apart. What are they lined up for? The young fellow explained that people are lined up to go into the theater to see the movie. Yeah, you see, it says Cleopatra. Why would anyone want to see you? Well, says the young fellow, the stars are very famous people. This woman playing Cleopatra is about to divorce her sixth husband, and people are interested in the lives of both stars. Oh, we've been told by the prophets to look at pure things, says Peter. I know a lot about this sinful life of Cleopatra. Why does anyone want to hear about her? And no wonder, Peter says, my teacher, Jesus, says in book of Matthew, chapter 24, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what will happen until the flood came and took them all away. This is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. These people are not even thinking, oh, it's just a car, it's just an airplane, it's just a, 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 a movie or internet and online services. All these opportunities, all of these things inspired by God to proclaim the message about the Savior Jesus who is coming very shortly into this world. Going down the street, Peter sees some man sitting and smoking. What is that man trying to do to himself? Oh, they just smoking, answered the fellow. Why would anybody want to do that? If God wanted us to smoke, 
he will create a special pipes maybe for us. Doesn't that make people sick? No wonder my friend Paul is saying. He is saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Don't you know what you yourself are God's temple and what God's spirit dwells in your minds? If anyone destroy God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred. And you together are the temple. As they continued on their journey, they saw people line up, maybe again six feet apart, to kiss the statue, tall of the statue. The boy explained what these folks are wanted to kiss the toe of the statue of Peter. Peter moves through the crowd and goes to the front until he sees that enormous statue of himself. Oh no, tell them to stop. They should not worship any image like theirs. It says in the Bible. Oh, now I understand the prophecy of Daniel, where he actually said, a power will rise up to change God's law. They have religious power. Yes, they have civil power. Print their own money. And they have their own guards. And even I heard what people refer to their leaders as father. Where are their families? They do not have families. For none of them are married. Well, if you say they think what I am the first pope and none of them are married. How it is that Jesus actually healed my mother-in-law? I too was married. Peter. Peter was overwhelmed with everything. And he says he no longer feels comfortable over there with their beliefs. So they too make their way down the street. And they found that someone is doing the baptismal act right there. As baptismal was conducted, to Peter's surprise, he sees a priest holding a baby up front, and he has a little bowl of water and sprinkle on the baby. That's not a baptism. The word baptizo means to put under, and this is not a baptism. In the book of Romans, chapter 6, it actually says about the actual baptism. Or don't you know what all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order then, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So Peter says he doesn't feel comfortable there either. The young boy and Peter went to another church. And the minister outside in the parking lot, while the cars are going to drive through in through the church, and he's talking the stories over there and proclaiming about hell. That many people are burning in hell even right now. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. Nobody is there right now, suggested Peter. My friend Lazarus came out of the grave, and I talked to him. Jesus raised him up. And he was not in hell or he was not in paradise. He was just peacefully sleeping out there until Jesus raised him on the fourth day. Back on the road, they were approached by a man selling lottery tickets to raise money to pay the minister and find different and sponsor different projects. They can't do that. Peter said, first of all, it's, it's gambling. Secondly, you see, your church should be supported with the tithing and free will offering, not by lottery. It says actually in the Old uh, Testament, in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be a food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven, and pour out for you such blessings that there will be no room enough to receive it. I've taken you nearly to all the churches, said the guy. There is, there is no church that will fill your needs. Peter, he could not longer hold his actual frustration. My brother John was right. 
when he said in the book of Revelation in the book of Revelation he said come out come out my people so that you will not share in your sins so that you will not receive any of your plagues what, what is the church over there asked Peter oh what's the strange church I don't want to go over there what is so strange about it oh the members they don't eat pork over there well, I don't eat pork either, it says in the book of Leviticus and in Deuteronomy. What else is strange about them? Oh, they don't drink alcohol, and they also worship on a different day. It's interesting. Unlike most of the other churches, they worship on a different day? Yes, they worship on the seventh day, the old Jewish Sabbath. They also send out a lot of missionaries all over the world and baptize people by, by immersion. These people are telling the world what the Lord Jesus is coming soon and we are living at the last days. And they believe what Jesus gives them power to have a new life and they are receiving that transformation. My dear friends, are we really that strange? It's quite interesting. But in the book of Steps to Christ, in page 26, we read in the following words. Christ is the source of every right impulse. He is the only one that can implant in the heart enmity against sin. Every desire for truth and purity, every conviction of our own sinfulness is an evidence that His Spirit is moving upon our hearts. I remember the good old days, Peter says. It was the Feast of Shavuot. Greeks call it Pentecost. When I preached about Jesus and the Spirit of God moved on all of us and then the people heard this, they were caught to their hearts and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And it's interesting what Peter replied in Acts chapter 2, verses 37 and 38. Repent and be baptized every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What do you think, my friends? What do you think? Which church will Peter join? Let's bow our head for our closing prayer. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, again I come to you with thanksgiving in our heart. I thank you, Lord, for the message this morning. Lord, as we end this service, I pray that you please fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit and grant us peace and understanding. And help us, Lord, to keep the Sabbath holy. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Dear students, parents, family and friends, today is an exciting day. Today Ethan, Akasha and Kelly are graduating. What a day! The world we live in is filled with danger. Yes, COVID-19, pestilence, it's just fulfillment of the biblical prophecy, earthquakes and hurricanes. And despite all the odds, you still manage to graduate. Wow! Praise be to the Lord! So let's give you a big round of applause online. It was just a few years ago that you came to our school, the known as Maui Adventist School. As young, timid students, you found yourself among the other students with different backgrounds and experiences. And during your time, the name of the school changed to Hawaiian Mission Academy, Maui. And you begin to think maybe about the purpose and meaning and mission in your life. You see, you studied many subjects here, even the Bible. Yes, I remember those special moments with you. And the Bible, which you may not have understood before. But your time here and your interaction with the other students and with teachers' aid and with teachers brought your experience and knowledge which continue to develop your learning. You will remember this time. Yes, you will remember this time maybe for the rest of your life. As Charles Dickens said, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Yes, in such a time like this, many will remember your graduation as they watch it online. And now, here you are, done with Hawaiian Mission Academy Maui. You are through for stressful days of testing, and maybe just for now. You work hard here, and you raise money to support the school and the needy, and you have realized that you are the most special class ever. And not only just because of such a time like this, but because you know personally your Creator, your Maker, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, let me read from the Bible a special text for you. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and the future. Yes, from the book of Jeremiah 29, 11. And now, in your time, it's just to go forward and take on the world, to find the pursue of your passion and love the Lord even more even more your Creator and your Maker. I would like to pray for you, my dear friend. Merciful Heavenly Father, we are praising you for the gift of life. Merciful Heavenly Father, we are praising you for the Christian education here in Maui. And today, dear Lord, we have this special praise for Ethan, Akasha, and Kelly. Oh, dear Lord, please bless their lives. As they've been through the schooling right now for this time, we would like for you to continue to support them, to continue to support their education and bless their life journey. Bless their parents, bless their teachers, and help them to be faithful until we will all see you in the clouds of heaven with your holy angels. But for right now, dear Lord, keep them safe. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Hi everyone. Let's bow our heads for opening prayer. Dear Lord, we give you thanks for the opportunity to gather together this evening in celebration of our three graduates. Akasha, Keely, and Ethan. Lord, please continue to be with them as they take their new journey to high school. Help them to be shining lights wherever they go. Help these three students to remember your ways and incorporate your ways into their lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Goodbye, Fong. Goodbye, my past class and Alex math. Goodbye, art, and I need to join a new start. Goodbye, my friends. This school year is coming to an end. Goodbye, my classroom. You gave me the education that I consumed. Goodbye, schoolyard where I played at Sabbath school after dark. The end. Dear Hawaiian Mission Academy Maui, Class of 2020, What a wild year this has been. Despite all the challenges, both locally, globally, and technologically, you made it through. Graduating eighth grade is no small feat under normal circumstances, and you did it in the midst of a global pandemic with the added challenge of distance crisis learning. We could not be more proud of you. As you go on to conquer high school, you will be faced with more decisions than you've ever had to make. These decisions will help to further form your character, your personality, your lifelong friends, your academic future, and ability to have the career you want. The decision to give in to peer pressure or to stand your ground and say, that's not for me, will not just happen once, but each time you stand up for what is right, it will get easier. You will grow more confident in your identity as a child of God, whose worth is not dependent on what others think of you. Remember who you are, a child of the King of the universe. Let God direct your journey as you seek His will in your life. Remember to surround yourself with people who will build you up and encourage you to keep true to your identity. You can always count on me to be in your corner, cheering you on and be a willing ear when you need one. Once my student, always my student. Dear Akasha, I have gotten goosebumps, or as they call it here on Maui, chicken skin, numerous times when admiring your artistic creations. Your attention to detail, eye for design, Thoughtfulness and regard for others will be great character strengths, no matter what path life takes you down. Remember to stand up for yourself when called for, to be brave and ask for the attention and help you deserve when you need it. You have to be your own advocate in this world. Akasha, I will miss your clever sense of humor and respectful listening ear. I never had to repeat directions twice for you. I will especially miss our shared enjoyment of corny puns. Be proud to be you, because you are an exceptional young lady, a gem in God's crown. So, Ethan, you walked into my classroom already equipped with the skills to succeed in school. You love to read, and you read to challenge yourself. You're not afraid to fail in your journey to master new skills and subjects. You really do embody growth mindset and know that a fail, F-A-I-L, is just a first attempt in learning. You grasped the important concept that learning is not something that just happens in school. Ethan, you've already discovered that learning should be a lifelong pursuit that will enrich your days foster meaningful relationships, open doors, further your career, and stave off Alzheimer's, which came up way too often in our class. Yes, your teacher is very forgetful. I will miss your boisterous laugh, your penchant for the dramatic, your clever insights, not letting me get away with any double standards, and your pronunciation of exceedingly difficult Bible names. Get a grip on your procrastination early. It very well could be the death of you. It was nearly the cause of my untimely demise when staying up until the wee hours of the morning to finish report cards meant falling asleep at the wheel the next day and a nearly fatal car crash. I will miss your creative stories, Ethan, reveling in your rich vocabulary and Sabbath adventures. Remember to find your peace in Jesus and not let fear plague your vivid imagination. 
I can't wait to see what great things God will bring about through you. Dear Keely, Certainly the boundary between teacher and friend was blurred between us. You have become family to me. What a blessing that our journeys led us both from the same area of Northern California to Maui and just four doors down from each other. I appreciate so many things about having you as a friend and student. Your quirky sense of humor never ceases to delight me. You understand how wonderful it is to own being a goofball and the freedom it gives you to be unabashedly yourself. I treasure your honesty, even when it meant calling me out for my drastic departures from the posted schedule and forgetting show and tell because I tried to fit too much into our school day. Keely, you are also a very respectful student, full of integrity, doing the right thing even when no one is looking. And you give great care to every assignment you turn in. Nothing is done with half effort. This can also be your downfall, as perfecting each piece of work can be very time consuming. Learn early on to prioritize what needs to be given thorough attention to every detail, and what can just be completed. I will miss holo holo outings, your charming stories about people leaving permanent indentations on their couches, and bursting into random songs with you. Keely, I know that your love for God and trust in Him, even when life seems cruelly unfair, will carry you far. What a great blessing you are to others. To the class of 2020, Thank you for being such an indelible, entertaining, lovable, mischievous group of students. I will always treasure my time learning with you. I will leave you with this guiding verse for your journey ahead. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Aloha and good evening everyone. I'd like to share this very special Hawaiian song with all of you. As we're gathered here for this special occasion, parents, children, school hana, this song sings of our righteous Heavenly Father. I'm 
First of all, I would like to thank my two teachers for helping and supporting me. They helped my transition from California to Maui be much easier, and they have always been so loving and caring. I also appreciated the inclusion of Holo Holo Days when we got to explore and have fun outside of school. I am so grateful for the loving school environment and friendly people that I've met over the past two years. I am so lucky to be surrounded by so many nice people, including my family, who have always been supported who have always supported and loved me throughout my entire life. I love them so much and I am so grateful to be trapped with them during quarantine because I don't think I could stand anyone else. This has been a great two years and I will miss everyone so much when I have to leave. I am so grateful for everything and everyone that I have met here. Thank you for a great 7th and 8th grade year. Aloha, my name is Akasha Kuashima and I would like to say thank you. First, I would like to thank my parents for making the sacrifice and best choice for me by enrolling me into Maui Mission Academy. I would like to thank my classmates and friends for their friendship, support, company, and making all my school years at Mission Academy worth it. But if I had to be specific about a certain friend, I would like to thank my best friend, Michaela, for being on my side and making my first day of school less scary and making that day awesome and memorable. I would like to thank all my teachers for helping me through difficult times and schoolwork, but most importantly, introducing me to God and His angel son, Jesus, and for also teaching me that no human is perfect and God created us to love, not regret. Thank you, Mr. Kendall, for helping me get settled in school. Thank you, Ms. Ramos, for being a person to talk to during tough times and for teaching me how to play ukulele, teaching me different chords, and songs, and also different forms of art. Thank you, Mr. Alex, for teaching me to live an organized life, how to write calligraphy, and introducing me to different kinds of art. Thank you, Miss Lee, for accepting me for me and making school so much fun. Last but not least, I would like to thank my Grandma Mary for being with me during every step of life and providing protection from heaven and giving me the strength to have a kind heart. She taught me life is short, but you should still treasure every moment and accomplish everything your heart desires. Thank you and everyone for being a part of my life here at Maui Mission Academy. Take care and God bless. Mahalo. I would like to thank my parents and my brother for their guidance and loving support. I would also like to thank my aunties, uncles, and cousins and grandparents for their love and support as well. I also appreciate my school ohana, church ohana, and sponsors for their help and prayers. To my schoolmates, thank you for making my time at Hawaiian Mission Academy Maui more enjoyable. I would like to formally thank all my teachers that have instructed me throughout my time at Hawaiian Mission Academy Maui. I thank Ms. Ramos for her continual encouragement of my art, no matter how bad it looked, and for her instruction during music class, which made ukulele enjoyable. I also would like to thank Mr. Alex for teaching me many things about science, social studies, and nature. Last but not least, I would like to thank Ms. Lee for her commitment to helping me succeed. I would also like to thank her for the many life lessons she taught me. I especially thank God for his never-ending love and his help throughout all my life. There has never been a better mentor than him. Let's pray. Father, we are proud of our graduates for their success at the Hawaiian Mission Academy Maui. Bless them for their accomplishments. Also, bless their future as they go into the next step of their young life. Continue to guide them and walk with them Bless their parents and families and help them continue to raise and support their youngsters in developing a Christian character. I would also like to ask your blessings upon our teachers. Both of them are, in a sense, graduating or leaving this school. Bless them for their honest work at this school. 
and help them to be able to continue to do great work at their new workplaces. We ask your blessing upon this school. Such a time as this, we all know that good Christian education is strongly needed. And we pray that Hawaiian Mission Academy Maui can fill the needs of many young stars for their academic and spiritual growth. Thank you again for being with us throughout this graduation ceremony. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all.